can see behind me it's largely deserted. There are four flights that are scheduled to arrive this afternoon and passengers on those flights will be part and parcel of a new pilot program that is being launched today and which is hugely controversial. A year ago one would not have imagined that we'd be in this situation. Now when you arrive in Israel you have one of two choices. Either you quarantine in an army hotel or you can go home and do a home quarantine for 10 days but now you have to go home with an electronic monitoring system. This entails wearing an electronic bracelet either around your wrist or your ankle. Now this bracelet is part of a tracking system. It's connected to a smartphone which is connected to a sticker that is placed on one of the walls of a person's home. The company monitoring the whole system will receive some kind of signal the moment the person steps foot out of their home. So it's a way to try and stop people breaking home quarantine and it's also a way for the Israelis to reopen the skies and return to some kind of normality. The company that has designed the technology says that everything is safe and that people should not be worried. In fact, it is not as intrusive this technology as other apps that are currently being used in Israel. They've actually gone so far as to call it a freedom bracelet, saying that it gives passengers arriving in Israel the choice to do an army hotel quarantine or a home quarantine. But a freedom bracelet. You can't take it off, right? It's not removable. It's not, I mean, people can cut it off, but the, the idea of the program is you, you go to your home, okay? You get the, the beacon, you place it on the wall, and then the program starts. This has been placed on your leg. Okay, through our partner Electra, they, they would place a beacon on your leg or on your on your wrist. And so long as the beacon is close to the bracelet is close to the beacon, you are in compliance with the program. There's so much criticism over this program even before it uh, it started and just because it reminds people of what prisoners often wear. Um, yeah. What do you say to people who, who voice concerns, legitimate concerns over over privacy and, and uh, um, you know, liberties of, 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 uh, of, of, of people in a democracy. Right. It's a very good question, and we've had lots of questions of that sort. So firstly, um, I think it's important to remember that this is an option that people have. Uh, if they're in the Corona Hotel and they can't leave the hotel, they're restricted there, um, there's an option to leave the hotel and have a much lighter uh, type of you know, monitoring for, for your program. Now, this doesn't take any... Uh, personal information. We don't take the biometrics or even the name. It's just an ID of a bracelet that's connected to a beacon. We don't uh, record audio, no pictures, nothing. I mean, most applications you have on your smartphone take much more information than we do. All we, the, on, the only intent of the program is to notify if the person has been at home for quarantine for 10, 14 days as required or not. So there's really you know, no personal information, no leakage. We, we think no breach of privacy. What are possible things that you've thought about that people could try and do with this technology or go around it? And, and what is your answer to that? We've actually, it's a super calm, you know, the company's been around for 32 years or so, but over the past uh, 10, 15 years or so, we've been utilizing this technology to help track if it's assets or animals or, or people in certain situations. And we're very experienced with uh, the various scenarios of people attempting uh, to override the system or to. And uh, in recent years, we've expanded very uh, aggressively into the people tracking market, uh, mainly offender tracking. Uh, we've been doing that in California, in uh, South Carolina, in Tennessee, in uh, Georgia. We've done it in Canada, Denmark, Sweden, Bulgaria. Uh, very interesting growth in that space. As you know, for those who may be hearing this and like, oh, well, what about privacy? And maybe some other things that, you know, uh, especially, you know, talking to U.S. people as well, you know, when it comes to this stuff. Uh, can, can you allay some fears as to how this actually works? And it's really more about protection versus going in to take, you know, uh, private information for other uses? Right. So first of all, our, our solutions are completely uh, encrypted and secure and the information uh, is passed in a way uh, that only the actual uh, government officers are able to, to see it and utilize that data and it's an anonymous way. Um, so that doesn't leave leakage and uh, residuals of private information. Uh, but more than that, you know, we have various uh, capabilities and solutions. Uh, there's just like in the offender monitoring, there's people that are high risk very high risk, like they've committed, you know, some very bad crimes and others that just, you know, got a, you know, a, a driving a traffic ticket. And we're able to scale the severity of the tracking in the system 
from low all the way to high is how closely you monitor them at what intervals, what kind of things are they allowed to do and not to do. Mm-hmm. And we have a solution that's, that's essentially, the, the, the basic solution is a smart, is a bracelet. It's a ankle bracelet that is anti-tamper and it's hypergenic and the battery runs for years and it's on the person, it's very comfortable and it goes underneath their sock and they stay at home. Um, as long as they're at home, everything's fine. If they want the ability to, tr- to leave the home, then they carry the phone that, that matches with it. And the phone has, beyond identification, a lot of other features. It allows you to do video calls and communications and track and communicate with your officer and what you're supposed to do and what not to do. Here, when we're looking at, at, at patients or, or potential uh, COVID-19 quarantine solutions, it's exactly the same thing. We're putting the same technology that's been deployed around the world. The governments can decide how much they want to track and to what kind of uses. Um, and we leave it to them uh, to make their decisions on rules and uh, privacy. Right. Um, and we leave it to them uh, to make their decisions on rules and uh, privacy. Right. Typically, you can track communities and audiences of people and say, they these people cannot go to that region right. or, the, or this region. You, you know, you could define however you want the system. It's very advanced. They These people cannot go to that region. If you're tracking through cellular towers, it's not as precise. It may be a 200 meter radius. If you want to, you know, you, you could be a meter away from someone and get infected. Mm-hmm. You don't need to be. Yeah. Uh, so when you're 200 meters, you could be in the same region. People never actually exposed to, to potentially the virus. So uh, our solution does give a lot more granularity and capabilities to the government customer. And they need to decide how to use it. Uh, but we are seeing that many different uh, countries around the world are looking to do this uh, in various uh, structures and platforms. And some of these projects are on such scale that uh, if we go from pilots and actual projects, it's going to be helping with uh, COVID-19 quarantine, uh, home tracking, just for one location, not the multiple that we're seeing around the world, you know, tens of thousands of units uh, that are potentially in request. We don't know if we'll be able to meet all that demand, uh, but until now, it was roughly 500 units or 1,000 units per program. And now, uh, for electronic monitoring, and now we're looking at things that could be 50,000 units, 100,000 units, or 5,000 on a smaller scale. Uh, also, something I forgot to mention, a lot of the prisons are getting overcrowded, uh, and they're taking people out because of the risk of uh, COVID-19. So either they have a chronic condition or at certain uh, certain other demographic, they want to get them out, and they're calling us. Uh, we've had some requests from some very, you know, unfortunately, uh, highly impacted areas of the world where they call us and say, we need equipment now. Please send us, you know, what you can, give us the pricing. And we're trying to handle all of that uh, uh, demand together with the demand of the uh, COVID-19. We didn't expect uh, to try to manufacture tens of thousands of units in a very short time frame. And, you know, it's still too early to tell. We're still just uh, in stages of uh, discussions, demos, pilots, uh, with right, customers. Right, right. But if things actually manifest and, uh, uh, we can help, uh, you know, fight the spread of this virus. You know, it'd be an honor because we've been tracking people and identification of people and helping governments protect their nations for you know, the past 30 years. And now we have an opportunity to do something, you know, really valuable with the technology that we've been evolving and developing for a very long time. All right, all right. Go, Chico, amigo. Chico, come back. I'm very proud to be the first Israeli to receive that bracelet because I think that it's much better for me to be at home than than be in a hotel. It wasn't hard for you to make the decision. No, there was no decision at all. That was my first choice.